everyone. I am going to be walking you through the pigeon dissection today. Here we have one of our pigeons. Um, it is fresh from the vacuum packaging, so uh, the anatomy, you know, doesn't quite look as natural as if we were looking at a bird outside, um, but we could still get some of the main anatomical features here. Uh, so if we start at the anterior end here, um, one of the main features we're looking for, I mean, of course, we have the obvious ones like the beak, uh, the nares within the beak, uh, the eye over here, and then we have this band going across the beak. Um, this is actually a fleshy portion known as the sear. Uh, if we go down towards the tail, we should be able to find the cloacal, cloacal opening. Um, so here we can find the opening to the cloaca right there. And of course right now we've got the bird's ventral side facing upwards. If we turn it the other way so that we're looking at the dorsal side, again if we go right near the tail, we kind of move some feathers off to the side. Uh, we do have one structure that we want to be able to identify here. Here we go. So right here, not sure how well that's showing up on video, uh, but right here we have a little pointed bit and that is the uropygial gland, um, sometimes also known as the preen gland. Uh, so that's going to produce oil that will help to um, give a little bit of waterproofing to the feathers and aid in preening. While we're on the dorsal side, we can also extend the wing and this should allow us to take a better look at the feathers. Uh, so we can see the joints here, right here where my finger is would be the equivalent of the wrist joint. Here would be the equivalent of the elbow. And then here would be the equivalent of the shoulder. So that means the humerus would be running here. The radius and ulna would be running in this direction. And then the carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges will be heading down in this direction here. Uh, so these, the first set of feathers here are known as the primaries or the primary flight feathers. Uh, then the ones that are attached to the, uh, the equivalent of the forearm, if you will, are the secondaries. You can see they're much shorter than the primaries. And then if we get over to the equivalent of the upper arm, where the humerus is there, there we'll be able to find our tertiary feathers, or our tertials. So we can see those here. It can be a little bit hard to see um, when the bird is wet from coming out of the preserving fluid, um, but when you are doing this dissection in class, I think you'll be able to see the structures um, quite a bit better. Now we'll go back onto the ventral side and we can start looking for our landmarks for doing the dissection. So it can be a little bit difficult to um, find exactly where to make the correct cuts for this dissection, especially when it is covered in feathers. Uh, so I find it can be quite helpful to remove some of the feathers, especially uh, from the lower portion here. And usually these will come out pretty easily. Sometimes you can just get the upper layer of skin. That will help too. And we can just set these aside. And essentially, already, 
we can see the kind of midline here. Um, so this portion here is actually very hard and that is the keel of the sternum. So that's the attachment point for the flight muscles. And kind of on either side here are the pectoral muscles, um, which will be for powering flight. If we remove just a little bit more, lower it down, closer to the cloaca, this will just give us a better idea of where to make the cuts. Okay. So you want to start with your scalpel. And here is my cloaca. You want to start just about um, a centimeter anterior to the cloaca. So we'll just make a cut there. Now there, depending on how the bird is positioned. You can sometimes have some internal organs fairly close, so I find that it's quite helpful to actually pinch that skin upwards a little bit and start cutting to either side. And you may find it, now most people really dislike doing this, um, but you will probably find your dissection goes a little bit easier if you move the legs to either side, and sometimes they will snap when you do that. So we'll just move them off to the side. And this will just allow us to get in there and make our cuts a little bit easier. So I can just cut along here. Possibly check to make sure that you're just cutting um, the skin and abdominal muscles and that you're not cutting into the internal organs. You can go a little further on you know, both sides as you go. And then if you've moved your legs off to the side, you can see that the abdominal flesh goes quite a way down there. And we're just gonna keep going all the way around. And essentially our goal is to just remove the breastplate um, off of the pigeon. Now, this uh, next thing, I'm not sure if you're actually gonna be able to see, um, but this is something that you should do when you're doing the dissection for yourself. So when you get to this point, you're going to want to kind of lift the breastplate up, and you will probably notice some regions of membrane. I can see one kind of right here. Often you'll see some uh, right up underneath the breastplate. I'm not sure how well you're seeing it in the video, but uh, here I can see a little membranous region. And what we're actually seeing as I'm doing this is we're seeing some of the air sacs that will be throughout the abdominal cavity. Just going to cut a little further here. Remember to be really cautious of where your fingers are. And this can become a fairly deep cut through a lot of tissue when you're going through the pectoral muscles. Now, the last part here is often very unpopular, um, but we do have a couple of bones uh, right around here that we are going to need to uh, cut. Um, you will not have to do this in the lab. Um, I will have 
pre-cut these using our bone cutters. So we can just make sure that we've freed this up. All right, now here's another reg region where it can be nice to have some of the feathers and skin removed um, because right in the upper region here um, is where we're gonna be able to find the crop. And that can often rip when you go to remove the breastplate. So I'm just gonna use my scalpel. I'm gonna remove some of this. And actually, I'm already right up at the level of the crop here. So I'm just going to cut some of these feathers away. So I can see that this thin tissue up here is the crop. Down below is the pectoral muscle. So I'm just trying to separate these two from one another. If you do end up tearing the crop, it's not the biggest problem. Actually, I just nicked mine a little bit right there. Um, we're just trying to get, I'm just doing it a little bit extra carefully so that there's a you know, nice demonstration for you. If you end up cutting through your crop, it's really not a big deal. Okay. There we go. Should be able to remove that breastplate now. There we go. So you can see that uh, thick pectoral muscle. That's our keel of the sternum. And from the underside, you can actually see more of the firm, bonier portion of the sternum. Here we go. And then just to kind of finish off the dissection, we want to actually make it all the way up um, right underneath the beak. So we're just, there we go, get a little cut in there. And we can move that skin off to the side. Okay, now I'm just gonna uh, zoom us in and take, we, take you through kind of part by part and uh, walk you through the anatomy of the pigeon. All right, so starting at the anterior end of the animal here, uh, we can see this largest part that we're noticing here all around this whole circle is the pigeon's crop. Uh, so the crop acts as a temporary storage pouch for food. Uh, also some very mild digestion, um, kind of softens the food. A um, little bit of enzyme production in there. Um, up above the crop is where we can see the esophagus. Usually the esophagus will be fairly thin and easy to move to the side. Um, however, this bird um, ate a lot uh, before it was killed. So its entire crop is full and stretched to the limit. Its entire esophagus is full and stretched to the limit. And you might even be able to see through its beak that it's actually got more seeds in its beak as well. Uh, so this one, the esophagus, is um, taking up a lot of the neck region. Uh, however, if we do move it off to the side, I just need to move this so you can see it a bit better. There we go, we'll just tease that away, get the, 
crop out of the way for you. We'll be able to see this second tube here. You can see some of it. Okay, now that we've moved the esophagus out of the way here, running along beside the esophagus is the trachea. So it may be difficult to see this on the video, uh, but if I move my probe underneath it, you should be able to see that it um, has some rings of cartilage and that those uh, are actually quite visible, or you can even just feel it with your fingers and feel the texture of the trachea there. Um, so that's the um, windpipe, um, so it needs that structure to keep it open. All right, now if we go down below the crop, we can see a little bit more of the, it narrows again and um, this will be the esophagus continuing. We can also see a little region here of trachea. There is a little bit of grain just from where the um, crop burst a little bit. And then very obvious here is the heart. Let me just improve the angle there for you. There is the pigeon's heart. So we have the large ventricle. This is actually two ventricles. You, of course, are not seeing the dividing point of the ventricles. Um, but there is a right and left ventricle. And then up above here, we have the atria. So we've got a right atrium and a left atrium. If we uh, move the heart anteriorly, so kind of lift it upwards here, uh, there will be some major veins and arteries that may break, but that's okay. You can actually sometimes even cut those out of the way if we need to. And I actually will do that so that we can see the um, structures underneath the heart. So I'm just going to take my scissors just off to the one side and just make a little cut. There we go. So now that I've moved the heart, you should be able to see here this is the trachea, and then the trachea branches into two smaller parts. I actually think you're not seeing that um, because our liver is quite large and is kind of getting in the way. So before I walk you through the um, respiratory structures, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the liver. Now, pigeons do have a gallbladder. Um, however, it is right uh, within one of the lobes of the liver. Uh, so in order to see it, we do need to tear into the lobes of the liver, and uh, I'm not going to do that as part of today's dissection. Just get rid of that last little liver section. There we go. So now that the, now that the liver is out of the way, can get a better look at the respiratory structures. So we've got our trachea there that will then branch into two bronchi. And each bronchi will make its way to a lung. And the lungs um, sometimes will be kind of hiding under a layer of tissue. You may need to uh, just remove a little bit of superficial tissue to be able to really see them. Uh, but here I've got my right lung. Again, it is extremely spongy. 
and on the left side um, here I haven't actually removed the tissue but I can see a very spongy region right here and if I removed some of the tissue I would easily see the lung. So from there, from there, let's go back to our digestive system. So we had our crop up here, then our esophagus, and from the esophagus we get to this slightly widened portion here. And that is known as the proventriculus or the glandular stomach. So that one is going to be secreting enzymes um, to aid in digestion. From the proventriculus, we can make our way down to this large structure here. And you will notice that this structure is hard as a rock um, when you do the dissection yourself. So this is the gizzard or the muscular stomach. Uh, so this one will, um, you know, sometimes you see birds swallowing pebbles. Um, those will be hanging out in the gizzard and will help to break down their food. Just because we can actually see it very well from this view, I do want to point out some more air sac membrane. Uh, we are going to move that out of the way as we explore the digestive system. Um, but just wanted to point out that um, if you see a lot of excess kind of fairly clear looking membrane, that's just going to be from your air sacs. All right, so then from our gizzard, we would lead into the first portion of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. The duodenum uh, kind of makes a kind of a loop here, and in between the loop of the duodenum is the pancreas. We'll continue along and we'll make our way to the jejunum. Uh, the pigeon looks really quite cool because we can um, kind of uncoil the small intestine. I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this uh, on the video. If not, you'll be able to see it quite well in person. Uh, we can uncoil some portions there. And you should be able to see, there we go. So there we can see some of the uh, veins that are running through the mesentery. Uh, so that's the, the mesentery is the membrane that's uh, sort of helping to keep the small intestine um, organized and uh, also plays uh, several other uh, functions as well. We can then continue along and we'll eventually make our way to this last portion of the small intestine where we start to descend. So this is the ileum and we will then find this little region here where we have two small little bumps on either side. So those two little bumps are the colexica and the colexica mark the junction between the small and large intestine. Um, so once we get past the colexica, we're at the large intestine, which will then exit via the cloaca. Uh, one last portion that we should be able to see here. Um, often we'll just have to move the intestines and sometimes the gizzard up and to the right and we should be able to find a spleen. Ah, so usually the spleen is very dark in color. Um, I believe that this one is actually just showing up as a lighter color for some region, reason, um, but it should be roughly bean shaped and should show up um, kind of, yeah, right underneath the gizzard. Um, I did initially think that it might be this, but I think that our spleen is just not quite our typical color in this bird. Now we can make our way to the lower region here um, to look at the uh, urogenital system. 
Often we'll have some liquid pooled, um, so it can be a good idea to use a bit of paper towel to get rid of that extra liquid. Then we can, uh, there we go, take a look down here. Uh, so we're seeing a large, um, this is almost the size of a kidney bean in kind of a lighter color. You can see that it's paired. We've got one on each side. Uh, so these are the pigeon's testes. Um, this is fairly large for uh, the testes. I have seen some of them um, where the testes are not much bigger than the colic cica. I certainly have seen ones that are larger than this too though. Uh, it kind of has to do with uh, breeding season. Um, so this one would be kind of approaching its breeding season in all likelihood. And then running along um, right kind of behind and to the side is the kidney. So there is actually, it's a three lobed kidney. So we've got one, two, three lobes. Right now there's a membrane covering it. Um, we can move that. Not sure if you're gonna see that any better on the video. We've got the one lobe, second lobe, and third lobe is down there. You're probably not seeing that one. And you will often also be able to view the ureter is the tube that will take um, urine from the kidneys to the bladder. Um, of course, we're in a bird though, so that would be uric acid. And uh, I'm able to see it from the angle that I'm looking at it, uh, but I'm not sure that that's gonna show up on the video for you. So it's kind of running right along there. So that is our internal anatomy of a male pigeon. So now we have a female pigeon that's been dissected. Uh, the liver has already been removed. The, the digestive system will look exactly the same as it did in a male. Um, so we're just gonna focus in on the urogenital system. So this can be a bit awkward um, to get in at the right angle. Um, so hopefully you're able to see it fairly well here. Uh, so this region, um, that's quite lumpy is going to be the ovary. Um, quite near the ovary we'll be able to see the ostium, um, which is kind of the opening to the oviduct. We can move further down. Just having trouble with my mirror image here. Uh, so now we're into the oviduct and the uterus as well. Uh, so you can see that this uh, bird, the oviduct and the uterus look quite lumpy. And that tells us that this bird has previously laid eggs. Um, none of those lumps are large enough that it would be a developing egg. Um, but if this bird had never laid eggs before, uh, we would see that the oviduct and uterus would look quite smooth. Uh, one more thing to point out here is that uh, this is all happening on the bird's left side. If we look at the right side over here, we're actually not seeing any of those same structures, just some membrane uh, left over from the air sacs. Um, so that is a kind of a general adaptation in birds. The females will only have um, reproductive organs on the left side of the body. So hopefully when you come to the lab to do your dissections, um, you'll be prepared to identify some of these organs and then you'll be able to see some unique differences in the animals that you dissect.